Hi, this is PDF at Bergzerg Arcade at BergzergArcade.com and today's tutorial is 101. In today's tutorial we're going to start working on our player input class. So let's go ahead and open up Unity. And I might as well open up Model Develop. I'm going to go back into Unity and I'm going to create a new script. And this script will be of course C Sharp. And I guess we'll just call it Player Input since that's what it's there for. Now this is the script that's going to capture all the player's input. So later on when we start uh, creating our spell buttons, our auto attack button, basically everything that the player uses to interact with the game uh, should be handled with this script. So let's open it up and let's change the name. And I'll save it. And to make things a little bit easier for people that come in a little bit later, uh, we're actually going to modify this a bit. If we go up to the top, we can get the required statement up here, or the required component. I'm just going to cut and paste that right on. And since this script is going to require the advanced movement script, I'm actually just going to make sure that it's automatically attached. And that's not the one I wanted. <laughs> advanced movement. So now when we add this script, if we don't already have the advanced movement script attached to our player, it'll automatically add that force. But since I already have it, it's not going to add anything. But we'll just drag it, drop it on. I'm just going to shrink that down. And I don't need the old movement script anymore, so I am going to remove that now. And this is head right into model develop. So I'm going to skip the start because I don't think I'm going to need anything there. Uh, just to hurry up and get things going though, to test, uh, I'm going to start grabbing the input from the user. So I'm just going to say if input dot button up, or I guess we'll use button down. And the button we're looking for, we'll start off with the ability to move forward and backwards. So I believe that was just called move forward. So if they press that button, and I have an error there, and for some reason I have a capital on the if. Okay, so if that pre if they press this button, we're going to want to find out if it's a positive or negative value. So we'll say if, and now we'll want to get the axis, input dot get axis, and of course the axis we're looking for is the move forward. And we'll see if it's greater than zero. If so, we'll do something else. We're going to do something else. So if it is greater than zero, what we want to do is pass in a value that's going to tell our advanced movement script to move forward. In this case, we'll want to be sending in a one. Or a better ideal, actually, let's make both of these public. And instead of just passing in a 1 and then having the script uh, convert that 1 to its place in the enumeration, uh, we can actually just send in the forward value. So make sure these are public. And if we come back here, we're going to use a new uh, function that's built into Unity called send message. And what this will do is it's like our broadcast messenger. It sends a message, but it will only send it to all the mono behaviors that it's attached to this game object. So for instance, I have this attached to my player game object. So it's going to send this message to every mono behavior on this game object. And if you notice, all of our scripts uh, have mono behavior on it, at least most of them. Our player character script does not have it, but I believe the class it inherits from, which is our base player, our base character, I believe it has mono behavior. But if you want to start sending message to that script, we'll definitely have to double check just to make sure. But the syntax for this is pretty close to what we're already used to. Uh, we're going to want to send it a string. So I'm going to say, move me forward. And then we're going to want to send in a value to it to tell it you know, which way we're going to move. And we can do that by saying, uh, we can't ask that. Way. So we need advanced movement dot 
the name of the enumeration, which was forward, and then the direction we want to move. So if it's a positive value, we want to move forward. Now there is an extra parameter here we could use, the send message options. And if you look, you have two options here. You have don't require receiver and require receiver. By default, I believe it's set to require receiver. Uh, you'd have to check the Unity docs just to make sure. But basically, when it sends the message, if you have it set to require receiver and there's nothing out there to actually catch this message, it'll throw an error. Uh, for debugging purposes, I want to make sure that it has to uh, have something out there to receive it. So I'm just going to leave it out because I'm pretty sure it's by default it needs one. But anyway, that's it for that. So I'm going to copy that. And instead of sending forward, we're going to send back. So we can move forward and back. Actually, this should not be get mouse button. It should just be get button down. Well, actually, all we really need to do is just get the button. We don't really care. Yeah, let's leave it at get button down. Now, we're also going to want to be able to detect when the player is not holding a button down so we can have the player not move. So I'm just going to come down here and well, we're going to want the exact same line up here, except we'll change it to button up. So this one will be a get button up. And inside of there, we'll just send the exact same message, except instead of sending back, we'll send none. Okay, so we have a way to move forward, move backwards, and not move at all. At least not forward or backwards. So I'm going to copy this string that we're sending here. Because that has to be the name of the function that we're calling. And I'm going to come back into advanced movement. And right under action picker, I think I'll put it. I'm going to create a public void. Then the name of the function. Now, it does take a parameter, which is of the type enum. And since it's moving me on the z-axis, I'm just going to call it z. And all we're going to want to do is set our local variable forward to equal that value. And that looks fine. Now, we really should have set the state machine up before we started playing around with it, but since... I've already started this video and we're working on the player input. I'm just going to cheat and put that update back in. And I'm just going to call my action picker from here. And that's basically a state machine. <laughs> so let's go test that out. I'm going to head back into Unity. I'll start it up since there's no errors. And I hit forward. He moves forward. I let go, he moves back. I press back, and he's moving back. Great. So let's head back into Mono Develop. And now let's get the run working. So I'll just come down here. It's just another if block. If. Uh, I'm going to copy this one, just save some typing. Except instead of get button up, I want get button down this time. And it wasn't called move forward. I called mine run. And the way I want this is to be basically like a toggle. So let's say you're walking along, you hit the, the run button, and your character just starts running. I don't want to have to hold it down. So I'm going to take this, copy it in, the send message anyway, and we're going to call a different function now. Uh, we're going to call it toggle run. And we're just going to send it a Boolean value. Actually, we don't even need to send it anything. So let's save that. We'll come over to Advanced Movement. I'm going to come down below the last one we made, which is Move Forward. And Public, it doesn't return anything, so it's a void. And I called it Toggle Run. Now to toggle the run, all I'm going to take is the run variable and I'm going to assign it not run. Now to, if this looks a little confusing, think of it this way. 
uh, your Boolean values are either true or false. So it doesn't matter what it's set to. Let's say it starts off set to true. You're going to equal it to not true, which means it now equals false. And if it was equaling false to begin with, it's going to equal you know, not false, which is true. So since it can only be two values, this is kind of just a little bit of shorthand to toggle something. But let's go try it out. And we'll hit start. And I'll be moving along. I'm going to hit the toggle button and away I go. Wee! Now, of course, it also runs you backwards. I'm not sure if I like that or not. But it is toggling. Me and my pitchfork are doomed. If only I had a hay golem. Okay, well, we know that works. I'm going to have to think about the whole running backwards. I might just make uh, later on if you're moving backwards, you move at a reduced rate. But anyway, that works. I'm going to come back into my advanced movement and in the init block. Where were we? I think we're up here. I'm going to set my run to be true by default. So I want my character to actually start running in the game instead of having to press a key to run. Because I'm pretty sure most people are going to want to run everywhere and not walk. So we'll save it like that. And it looks like this video is already over our 10 minute limit. So I'll save this off and I guess we'll start another one. I'll see you then. Bye bye.